wolf back coming back at you again today got another little video this is a sneak peek of the new quail barn it's not completely finished by any means but we had came a long way but i just want to give you a little sneak peek show you how some things are coming together maybe give you some ideas on how to do your own little quail barn but just want to show you how we do things here uh a lot of people behind the scenes when it comes to the quail barn and raising quail that you don't see they're a little camera shy i know i'm kind of the same way uh but maybe i can get one or two of them uh, do a little video so you can see them one of them is my youngest daughter shayla she has helped me a lot through the years raising especially this year alone raising the quail getting the numbers up keeping eyes on them i mean she does a fantastic job she's on top of it uh, my wife she comes up with you know kind of the sales pitch or however you want to word it ideals in other words on how to get people more aware of, of the health benefits of the quail eggs and she pretty much is like the marketing part of the group she guides me and helps me pinpoint you know you got a group over here who had no idea whenever you heard of quail eggs that you need to go talk to them so i do <laughs> even though i'm not a people person I try my best to educate people on the benefits of quail eggs. The meat alone, to me, is a lot better than chicken or anything else. You can produce it faster. Wait, you can produce it not only faster, but you can produce it for half or even a small portion of the cost of what it would take to do chickens. Yes, the birds. Now, I wait raise jumbo. That's all I do is jumbo. I don't do standard or... Any, any colors or nothing like that. I just do my jumbo browns. That's all I mess with. Because I'm in it for myself to supply meat and eggs. I'm also in it to help others, you know, learn on their way, you know, hey, this is how you can do your own meat and eggs. It doesn't cost much. It's simple. It's easy. Anybody can do it. You know, this is how we do it. You know, for example, I'll show you how... We do our little setup right now. It's not finished, but just remember, it's a work in progress. It takes a long time to work itself up. But the main thing is, is helping people along the way produce their own meat and eggs. Get the health benefits from the eggs, the health benefits from the meat, and then they can learn, you know, hey, I can do this in my garage. Exactly. It doesn't take that much space. It really doesn't. And if you're just doing it for your family or your friends, because that's basically who I do it for, it doesn't take much room at all and feed is not that expensive if you only got like a hundred quail it doesn't cost that much to do that much i mean to feed that much quail it really doesn't uh if you got a hundred quail i say you might go through two bags of two 50 pound bags of feed a month that's it you ain't gonna go through that much and you're looking at see Okay, let me word this right because I don't I don't want to confuse nobody. I don't want to get it wrong. If you got a hundred quail that's already went from, you know, baby stage, junior stage, and to now adult, they're laying. Okay, I switched to a layer mash, a layer crumble. I'm sorry, I word that wrong. Layer crumble is what I switched to, because at that point they don't need that much protein. They need uh, calcium. A little bit more pro a little bit protein but not as much as they did when they was chicks so i pay like 14 dollars for a 50 pound bag of feed so 14 times two that's all i pay for a month for just 100 quail okay now i'm trying to get my numbers up so of course my feed's going to go up a little bit but if you're just the average person who's just doing it for yourself your friends your family a hundred quail is all you're going to need. And two 50 pound bags of feed, you know, layer crumble a month. That's it. You don't need nothing else. And what? That's under $50 for the whole month. For a hundred quail. You tell me if you can do that a hundred chickens if you're only going to spend two 50 pound bags of feed for the month for a hundred chickens. I don't think that's going to work out very well. I really don't. But with the jumbo quail, it works perfect. But I'll show you this little setup. I don't want to keep rambling on and 
y'all listening, but I, I know y'all want to see it. I'm kind of excited. I hope y'all are. But I'll show you what we do got done right now and hopefully give you some ideals and I'll explain to you how I do my eggs. And I got incubators scattered a little bit everywhere right now because later on, beginning of this year, me and my brother, he's good. He's like if you watch my shower farms and you see uh, Papa on there, my brother is like Papa. It comes to building something or making something, I go to my brother. He is real good at that part. Uh, he makes some of the brooder boxes you're fixing to see. He makes those, and he does a fantastic job for what I need. He does it. Uh, if it's metal, I can help you out. If it's wood, I go to my brother. He's a lot more superior on that than I am. But uh, I'll show you the setup real quick, see what y'all think, give you some ideals, and then, of course, as we finish everything, get it actually set up the way we want it, I'll show you another video. And leave a comment, let me know what else you want to see. Because, you know, I, I'm working a full time job, I'm doing this, and trying to finish a house and everything else, so, you know, I forget. <laughs> so, help, if y'all want to see, see something else or know something else, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, but if you don't leave a comment, I will forget. So, leave a comment, let me know what else you want to see. But, let's get to it. Okay, you got the small refrigerator that I store the eggs in for customers who wants eggs to eat. You got a brooder box over there, food, incubator, incubator, another incubator. That one is running right now. There's a little over 100 eggs inside there right now. This is the uh, other brooder box that I have. It's a lot bigger. It's a TSC metal container that they use for watering calves. My brother, he actually designed this. He done a good job at it. He built the uh, doors on it. So, and what I love about it, if you can see, right in there is a divider. Now that divider, let's get that back. That divider goes at the top, but at the very bottom, as you can see right there, there's about like a four inch gap there. What that's for, and I mean, he came up with the idea and it, it worked perfect. Say they get too hot over here, they can... Walk under there and cool right off. They get cold, walk right back under it, heat back up. We keep the food and the water next to the heat lamp when they're chicks so that, you know, the food and water stays warm because you don't want to give your quail cold water. That is a very bad idea. No. But you might get by with that baby chickens, but not quail. Uh, but that's the setup right there. Food, water's right here, heat lamp. They get too hot, walk right over there, cool off, come back. And as big as this is, it holds a hundred, no problem. A hundred baby chicks. You word that right. Not a hundred quail, a hundred baby quail chicks. And then this incubator here. Now these are cheap, you know, knockoff Chinese incubators. But for what I need right now, they are working. But because I'm trying to get my numbers up, me and my brother's going to make one that actually does you know two to three hundred at a time but we kind of modified this one and you got your temperature humidity and all that stuff but what we did to modify this is the egg turner that comes in here it only holds like 40 something uh chicken eggs of course that are too big for the quail so what we done was we took the uh egg racks from farm innovation or little giant whichever one you want to use Put the quail rows in there, put that system inside there, and of course it's a different plug-in, but put that inside there. Now I can do like right around 100. Holds 110, but when it comes to jumbos, you gotta space them out. So it holds right at 100, maybe 101. But you get, of course you got two plugs in when you do that, one for the incubator, one for the egg turner. The surge protector, that is a big old help. Especially when it comes to incubators, so nothing overloads. This one's not on, so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. See, there's the egg turner system. And, of course, we just have the cord going right up there. there. But now, now we can do, you know, 101 or 102 eggs at a time. So, this one, do 102. We'll push it. This one here, I have another layer that stacks on top of this and then the lid stacks on top of it 
and then I could put two egg turners in there and that one incubator I can now do 200 plus this 100 so that's 300 at a time that's old people that's what I started out with it's been through everything those work better but sentimental that's why he's here of course your food now this is one brooder box that my brother built and he built it exactly the way I wanted it because I told him I wanted one that was easy to access through the sides wasn't too big I wanted to be able to put a tray underneath of it so I could clean it easier but at the same time I wanted a vent that I can control how much air goes in there if I needed to I could put a fan in it so this is what he designed me and it works perfect you know doors don't want to do it too much because I got some babies in there door slide and this right here is the vent oh wrong one there we go now I can control there they are now I can control how much airflow at a time goes inside of it you know see if I need a little there's a little if I need a lot it goes out a lot and then right now they don't need a whole lot of air so that's why it's shut but I also have a fan that mounts up here and blows down so that once they hit about two weeks old I can open this up give them good airflow they're good to go and of course the refrigerator that keeps all the customers eggs inside there nice and chilled and then that breeder box and then right over here is my little egg setup I am picky on my eggs that's just me I know that when my customers want jumbo quail eggs I want to give them jumbo quail eggs so I go through every time I collect eggs of course I get about two of these sometimes three of these a day I go through each one and I'll weigh them if they don't weigh at least 15 grams or more, I don't consider that a jumbo. I don't give them to the customer unless they want them. I don't give them to them. If they're wanting jumbo quail eggs to eat, I weigh each one. And I'll show you what I mean. Make sure that's working. Grab an egg. Right there is 15 grams. That's what I consider a jumbo egg. That's what the customer's getting. Now what's left inside here, I don't consider them, by my standards, jumbo. Like this is one I don't consider jumbo. Put it on there. 12 grams. I'm not going to sell that to a customer that's wanting jumbo quail eggs to eat. They're not getting that. Now if they ask for it, I'll give it to them. But no. I'll save it and use it for incubation. Because the egg size does not determine how big that quail gets. So, I can just turn around, throw it in the incubator, I'm still good. But, packaging them up, put my labels on there, in the refrigerator they go. If they're a first time customer, then I'll go up here, I'll get a pair of quail egg scissors, and I'll give it to them for a first time customer. I'll give them a free pair of quail egg scissors, so that they can open these eggs up easy. And then, of course, they get to keep them. Anytime they want more, they already got them. All they got to do then is just get the eggs. Egg cartons, labels, scissors. I have foam because there's some customers who want eggs for incubation. So, if I'm going to pack them up and deliver them to them for incubating, I put them in here. So that as I'm going, driving down the road, you know, hitting potholes and everything. Some customers will live out in the middle of nowhere. So you're going to hit gravel road and stuff. I want to make sure that their eggs, when they get them, they're guaranteed. They're not broken. They're not shattered. They're not cracked. So that's why I use a phone. But that's a little setup right now. It's not fancy by all means, but it's a lot better than what we did. We're not scattered everywhere now. We're all in one location. So I hope that helps y'all out. Gives you some ideas. And of course, once we get everything set up, We'll go ahead and give you a little bit more of a tour and detail and show you how it sets up. But until then, this is Wolfpack out.